Hi, I'm Thomas Rosetto, and I've been studying the non-dual wisdom since the summer of 2005. And um, one of the things that's most important is this idea of non-duality, which actually points to the idea that God and creation are one reality, not two. This is the not two that's at the core of the word non-dual. And we use this word because when God arises as creation, there is a full saturation. God is permeating creation completely. And in this sense, they are one. And yet we also make a distinction between God and creation because God is the source of creation. It's not the other way around. Creation is not the source of God. And there's a thousand-year-old metaphor of the actor and the character. The actor comes forward as the character. The actor is the source of the character. It's not the other way around. They have a dependent relationship in the sense that the character is dependent upon the source, the actor. And yet, when the actor brings forward the character, they are one. Every single quality or aspect of the character is a quality or aspect that is put on exhibit by the actor. What appears to be the will and power of the character are actually the will and power of the actor. When you look into the eyes of the character, you're looking directly into the eyes of the actor. You don't need to dig into a deeper level to find the actor. The actor is fully present at every level, and so it is with God. Every single aspect of creation is fully permeated with God, the Creator. And this is why we say they are one. Thomas? Yes, Timothy? Speak about how God is not an it, an object out God. there, up in the sky, the big guy in the sky, but is transcendently beyond all, yet right here within all as the very self of all selves. Yes, this wisdom comes about when you, when you go into the question of who am I? At first there's the question, am I just a body? And then there's the recognition that there's a body and a soul. But when you recognize that you are pure awareness, and when you discover that this pure awareness is the divine awareness, it's the source awareness. It's the, the creator of all of creation. And therefore, it is transcendent. And one of the most important characteristics of this source awareness, as you pointed out, is that it's not an object. It sees, but it cannot be seen. It hears, but it cannot be heard. It feels, but it cannot be felt. This is what our most ancient text the Upanishads say. And to what the Upanishads put on the table, which is all very beautiful, I like to also add that this source awareness is the undreamt dreamer of dreams. Mm -hmm. If you look for God by looking for an object, whether it be a state or an energy state or some kind of thing or experience, this is what we refer to as things or objects. And when you find these energy states, some of them quite divine, and make you feel really good. These are not to be put down. They're to be honored for what they are. But they're energy states, and they are not the actual source awareness, which is beyond all of our senses, and is therefore um, unknowable as an object. Yet the beauty of it is that we can know it because we are this. If we were going to talk about something that's completely invisible, like gravity, we would get to know it by looking at its effects. But this is something that we can get to know because we are this. This knowing by being. Yes. Direct. Yes. This immediate. Knowing utterly being. intimate. Yes. And this recognition is what opens up the heart because we now see that this open source awareness that comes forward as all of creation 
is the one self, the capital S self, that comes forward as all apparent selves. And in this, we recognize that this person and this person and all persons are an emanation of this one self. And so everyone is the face of the divine. And here we have the true, deep motivation for compassion and loving kindness. Because this great reality, the self of all selves, is not impersonal but suprapersonal. And so each person is a beautiful gift within the dream play of relationship and mutual feeling and again loving kindness, compassion and sympathetic joy as the Buddha taught 2500 years ago. How is your experience of finding this one self in each personal self, this suprapersonal that's personing as each one? Talk about your daily experience of this. Well, I would say many years ago I had <clears throat> an intuitive understanding of this that grew and grew. And yet, and therefore, there is a genuine concern for all brothers and sisters. And yet when this wisdom, this understanding, this deep understanding that this person is you, that every single person is a unique expression of this one divine self, and therefore is honored where they are, how they are. Um, as I understood this more and more, it's just easier and easier to look at the world and accept it emotionally and connect genuinely rather than um, I hear some of the non-dual teachers are in the disidentification mode and they step away and step away without reconnecting and realizing you step away from this small idea of me being this one little person and you reconnect with everyone and recognize and you live from this openness and recognize that everyone is the divine and therefore the heart opens up and the divine virtues flow forward. Thank you so much for having this quick little talk. Thank you. Most excellent, Brother Thomas. Most excellent. Namaste. Namaste.